Hello, Steve here from High Tech Design Safety. Hope you're having a great week. Continuing our series on information technology equipment design standards. We had been talking about UL IEC ANSI 60950-1. And I needed to bring up that that standard is going to be replaced by IEC 62368-1. Uh, kind of similar scope and everything else. Um, the That 62368 came out in 2010. So we're, you know, got an implementation time that's already well passed. So you can look at either standard and see which way you want to go. Primary differences are, um, you know, the, the, the new standard, the... 62368 has more detail on all of these um, um, sections, and it seems to be more consumer focused. Um, there's more details about the enclosures and the materials of construction there with an eye to um, preventing fire in the enclosure. And then same again, um, you know, your temperature over, over temperature devices and more detail on those and requirements. Again, also internal transformers. Um, and then there's a lot more detail in there and requirements in there for safety labels and marking are required. Um, and then these um, um, safe, safe power supplies, these protective power supplies, a lot more clarity and detail on those as well. So you'll see that the, the 62368 standard is going to be, in my opinion, more aimed at consumers. Um, there's got a lot more detail on grounding, protection from electrical shock, and uh, more depth on protective earth grounding. And then um, more detail on access controlled environments versus ordinary people interacting with equipment. And this is really getting more and more into um, the differences between something that would go in an industrial commercial environment and something that might go in a consumer environment, home, retail, public space, and details on how to prevent those people from getting into the equipment or damaging it. Like I was saying earlier, a lot more detail on prevention of fire, um, including um, protecting from dropped um, conductive materials like a screw or a wire or something like that being dropped in and then faulting the equipment or causing a short. Um, this one's not as critical, um, but it'll let more equipment out of the drop testing requirement. It went from five kilograms to seven kilograms. And then a lot of detailed requirements on the use of materials, chemicals, um, um, pressure, um, in anything that uses pressure, any pressure vessels, any pressure piping and all that stuff is going to get a lot more scrutiny under the new standard. However, I think it's a great place to go. If you're moving from um, 60950 to 62368, we certainly can help you do that. Um, here's what we typically see as a product development path. You and your team will come up with a product idea and a concept. And we'll help you do an initial risk assessment, scope the document, um, help add the product safety and listing requirements into your product requirements document, and then help you understand all the regulations and compliance that needs to happen around it. Um, and then provide you with the standards and the regulations to design it to. And then we can help you with the test, verification, validation. You can do some of it, we can do some of it, we can share the burden and share between those two. I hope this quick overview helps you with the differences between IEC 60950 and IEC 62368. If you have any questions, just give us a call. We'd really like to help out. And if you see anything you'd like to know more about, let us know. Please like and subscribe. We're trying to reach that 100 subscriber barrier, and we're getting close. So your help on that would be useful, too. Thanks again. Have a great week.